but I'm so nervous about being the person who ruins somebody else's reading experience. Because at a thousand percent, I'm gonna say a thousand percent, five, ten, five, 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 five. Wife upstairs, this was a great book. This is not the right book. I pulled the wrong book. <laughs> oh, I totally pulled the wrong book. So I don't, but it's just hard. I think at the end of the day, the moral of this video is, it's hard being a book reviewer and a book reader. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. Today's video is gonna be something a little bit different for me and this is kind of a discussion video. And by kind of, I mean totally, because even though it's me talking with you, I'm hoping we can engage down below because partially this is me looking for some input from you guys and this is also me talking about some frustrations I have with books being spoiled. So I was reading who is Maud Dixon? I've since finished it. It's a brilliant book. I absolutely loved it. But I was probably 65% of the way into this book and I was doing an Instagram scroll and I was just watching some people's stories and people were talking about books that they loved from this year and the comment in the story from the bookstagrammer who I love a thousand percent spoiled the story. And it was something that was not on the inside cover jacket. It was something that was not known going into it. And it a thousand percent tainted my experience with the rest of the book because I was like, if this just spoiled the book for me, I'm gonna be super upset. And the more I was reading, I was like, yup, that was totally the spoiler for what actually was going on in this book. And I don't even have the words for how mad I am because it completely, tainted my experience with the rest of the book and i finished reading this a few days ago i finished reading this on the 16th of november and i don't know how to rate it because i don't know how to separate the fact that i knew what was going to happen and for the last 30 35 percent of the book i was waiting for the thing and i <laughs> so mad about it but I was talking with Sarah from Sarah's nightstand and Lindsay from Lindsay's little library about it because this is not the first time a book has been spoiled and Sarah was like you should make a video about it because you've been talking about this quite a bit lately sorry Sarah but thank you Sarah but I have because I am not talking about in the context of you're on Goodreads and something is blocked out or somebody warns spoilers below or somebody films a review video and they say now with spoilers jump ahead to the next part. I'm not talking about all the stuff with the bells and whistles and warnings. I'm totally fine with that. I will skip. I will read. It's in my court. But when somebody just arbitrarily spoils a book, especially when you're talking mystery thrillers, it really really makes me angry. So I'm not gonna sit here and say that I've never spoiled a book. I have never intentionally spoiled a book, but I'm sure I have unintentionally spoiled it because as I've talked about in other videos too, so many books I'm finding, and I know this was the case with Maud in some ways, and I know I, actually this is totally the case with Maud in some ways, because the inside cover jacket, if you guys haven't read this book yet, don't read this, just read the book. Just read the book. It gives away way too much. I mentioned this in another video after I read it, The Hunting Wives. Loved this book, Desperate Housewives, frothy, mystery, rich people behaving badly, loved it. The inside cover jacket gives away too much. It tells you too much. And I feel like a lot of books are telling you things that happen way too far into the story for you to have to, you don't have to know it up front. One last stop. The entire premise of this book doesn't happen until at least 100 pages into the book. And it just, it's tainted my enjoyment of it. I still have DNF'd this. This is like a soft, maybe a hard DNF at this point. I'm on page 217. So I'm like halfway through this book. But I had such a hard time getting into it because I knew what the thing was, but it doesn't happen for the longest time. So I feel like how how do you read about a book but not be spoiled for a book? Because you need to read enough to know you're interested unless it's like an auto by author, in which case like, 
there could be no description of a Riley Sager book and I'm buying it because he's an autobi author for me. Doesn't matter what the book is about, I'm going to read it. But how do you put enough in a book jacket to intrigue someone to read it, to give you a little bit of a hint of what the story is about, but not give away too much. So I feel like this is like a two prong conversation. So it's book jacket copy telling you more than you need to know, and then book reviewers spoiling, telling you more than you need to know without warning you, or like I said, without realizing it. But if you've read the book, you should know what you shouldn't say. So what do we do? What we do is change our battery and I'm probably in a different place, but we're just gonna go with it. So what do we do? How do we as book reviewers review books, giving you enough, but not too much? And how do we as readers know that we wanna read a book without learning too much about a book? And I have noticed more when I am editing videos, and I did it not that long ago in my birthday book haul, I got a book that I didn't realize was the second in a series. <laughs> so shame on me. And I read you guys the back of the book, and as I was reading it, I realized at that point it was the second in a series, and what's on the back of the book actually spoils something for book number one. That's on me for ruining it for myself, but I cut it out of my video because I didn't want to ruin it for you guys. And I really, in the moment, because I don't script my videos, which is probably pretty obvious, I know when I'm talking about a book, I can definitely start to say things that in the aftermath, I realize have spoiled something. And sometimes trying to edit it is tricky. Sometimes I will insert myself doing like a little like, hey guys, this is me in the future. This is what I like, didn't mean to say this. I said that, I said too much. So here's a little snapshot of what the book is about. So I try to be really aware of it when I'm doing my reviews here. And like I said, I know I've definitely fallen into the trap of I've given away too much, but I'm trying to be really mindful of it now. So my question to you guys is like, what do you wanna know from a book review that's helpful but not spoilery? So when I think about books that I want to, I'm like looking at a book here for an example, which is like not gonna help. So even when I was just very recently talking about The Maidens, which is the divisive book of the year, I feel like. But there were things about this book that didn't, didn't change my enjoyment of it. Like things I liked, things I didn't like, but I couldn't talk about them without spoiling stuff. So that's in my Goodreads. And that is in my Goodreads with a spoiler bracket on it. But I tried to talk about the book without giving too much away. And it's hard when you're talking about a thriller. And I'm like looking up here and I feel like, I'm just gonna keep using Riley Sager as an example because I feel like he is someone who is known for dabbling in the, is it thriller, is it horror, is it supernatural, is it people behaving badly, what is it? He's dancing a line. He does it with all of his books and it's part of what I love about him. And this is another thing that Sarah and I were talking about because we were like, how do you review a book without giving it away? And you don't wanna say anything that even if you, and this is not having to do with him, that book, anything, but if I were to say, and this is what Sarah and I were talking about, something to the effect of like, it was going in a direction I liked, but then the mystery wound up being something else. So if it was going in a direction I liked where it was like all signs were pointing to unicorns did it and you know like unicorns came out of the ether and they were the evil ones and I'm telling you I like that and you're reading it and you're like oh it's the unicorns but like it's not the unicorns because Audrey said it was going in a direction that she wanted, but then it changed. So I know it's not gonna be the unicorns, it's gonna be something else. It's gonna be the leprechauns or whatever. And this is the worst example in the entire world. But even if I so much as say like it started, like the mystery started to be something I was really enjoying, but then it switched gears, you're gonna know, well, this red herring here is a red herring. This is not actually the thing. So how do you talk about it? And I'm trying to come up with ways where I can talk about things, where I can talk sort of conceptually or the tropes that I love in books. And sometimes there's a trope that is a giveaway. So like one of my least favorite tropes in a book is 
the unknown twin, is the doppelganger, is the brother or sister who is mistaken for that person all the time even though they're not twins, the evil twin, the, the twin we didn't know we had, I'm sitting in a in a dark room and you're looking at me on Zoom and you can't tell that I'm not who I say I am because I kind of sort of look like the person that you think you're talking to. Unless it's done expertly, which once in a blue moon it is, I hate that trope, but I will not tell you guys a book that has that trope in it because I don't want to ruin it for you because then you're going to know what it is. So I will just, <laughs> it's one of the ones that I will never talk about book specific because it ruins the book. So I try and come up with ways to talk about things I love, you know, the reluctant return home, the dark academia vibes, you know, the uh, dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things, which is not necessarily going to be a shocker if I'm like, this is a retelling of Jane Eyre. So if you know anything about Jane Eyre, you already know a lot about this book. So that's not going to be a spoiler because it's a well-known fact that this is a retelling of Jane Eyre and if I also tell you it's dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things then that gives you something but hopefully not too much so you're expecting sort of dark and messed up so is telling you dark and messed up too much like what is too much and then from a like Instagram standpoint or a booktube standpoint when I watch other reviewers a lot of people do a great job of saying, I'm gonna get into spoilers and here's your warning and back out now. And there was a podcast that did not do that now that I'm thinking about it. Let's talk about a podcast for a minute and then we'll talk about Instagram. I was listening to an author interview podcast and I'm not gonna tell you what the book was or what the podcast was but it was just supposed to be an interview with an author that i love talking about her new book and great and there are definitely podcasts which will get into spoilers they will save it for the end or they will warn you and in this podcast the podcaster asks the author a question about the book and the characters and it's one of these books where it's a mystery thriller you know people die you know somebody in the cast is a murderer but you don't know who survives, obviously, because you haven't read the book yet. And the podcaster referenced two main characters and said, I loved at the end of the book how this happened with them. So A, I know they both survive. B, I know that they're either like in it together or there's some sort of connection between the two of them. And three, if one of them is the murderer or is a suspect, they either got away with it or they didn't do it because they're both there at the end and they're happy and they're fine. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you just did this with no warning, no nothing at all. And <laughs> so I was like, well, not gonna read that book anytime soon. And hopefully by the time I do read it because it was a 2021 new release that I was excited about, then I still am and I'm still gonna read it. But hopefully I will have forgotten that that happened. But I was like, oh man, like, no, you ruined it. And this reminds me of another interview I was watching. So it was a, it was on booktube. It was a author interviewing another author on a channel that I love and I watch. And it was two authors that I absolutely love. And I can see how it happens, but it was a live interview and the interviewer said something about the book that was the twist at the end. And she said, it was like such and such, blah, 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 blah. And you could see the look on the other author's face like, and thank God that author just rolled with it and talked right over it. And if you hadn't read the book, you wouldn't have had any idea. And it might've felt like a little bit of a throwaway line. But if you read the book, I was like, oh my God, she just spoiled the twist of this book and totally didn't realize it. And it was in conversation and it was live. So there was nothing you could do about it. But I was like, oh my goodness, she totally just spoiled the book. And again, people not, people may not have picked up on it in that sense and may not even have picked up on it while the reading of the book, like while they're reading it. Cause if you're not again, looking for something, but I've, it happens, like it happens to the best of us. I'm not asking for perfection from people and especially when you're in those live modes, but I do think 
let's talk about Instagram for a minute. When you are actively posting, when you are taking the time to type something in and write it, just think maybe before you post something that could be a complete spoiler for a book for people who haven't read it yet, especially when people are talking about books that they loved this year that they read. Or, and it didn't even have to be like a 2021 release. Like that was not the whole point of the post. It was just like anything you read this year that you thought was amazing that you were recommending to other people. So I just feel like, please just, I don't want to, like, I don't want to risk anything being ruined. Like I literally, I told Sarah and Lindsay, I was like, I'm not going on Instagram. I'm not going on booktube. I'm not watching anything. I'm not listening to anything. I'm not reading anything. I'm only watching non-bookish content because I don't want to be spoiled for anything. And there was somebody else that I was watching. So let's talk about booktube who I had watched for a while. And in one of their videos, they spoiled a book that I had already read. And I was like, oh my God, like that's a full spoiler. Like that's a big time spoiler. And it started to make me listen and be more mindful of the fact the more they talked about books that I was familiar with and I recognized parts of the review that spoiled things, it got to the point where when they talked about books I hadn't read yet that I wanted to read, I would skip that part of the video because I didn't trust that something wouldn't be spoiled for me. And that's a terrible feeling when you feel like you can't trust the people that you turn to for recommendations and reviews and all of those things. And I never want to be that person, but I feel like it's just happening more and more. And again, I was so, I was in the worst book slump at the beginning of November. And I mentioned this in my October 2nd wrap up video. I could not connect with a book to save my life. So I read a couple nonfiction books about writing to try and bridge that gap. But I, everything I picked up and even, I'm not even kidding. I really feel like November 1st, like something happened. And maybe with the something that happened was the universe being like, it's National Novel Writing Month, you need to be writing. But it didn't work because I need to be able to balance out my creativity by reading and writing. The book I was in the middle of on November 1st, all of a sudden I was like, I can't, I can't read this anymore. It's not working for me. And part of it is because it had that true crime spin and the book I'm writing has a true crime spin. So that was not the book I should have been reading at the time, but I was having the hardest time connecting with anything. And finally I was like, I'm gonna pick this book up because everybody raves about it. I've heard such great things about it. I bought it earlier this year and I'd kind of been saving it. And I was living for this book. It was breaking me out of the slump. I couldn't read it fast enough. I was totally invested in the story. I needed to know who is Maud Dixon. I needed to know what was going on with Florence, who was our main character. And I was hooked. And then to be coming out of a slump and falling in love with the book and then have the book ruined for you, I was rage. I had so much rage. So much rage. Again, very sorry, Lindsay and Sarah, for getting there <laughs> to listen to me rage about it. But I think it's a fine line and it's a challenge to be a book reviewer and not give away too much. And even when people try and comp books, sometimes I feel like that's helpful. Sometimes I feel like it's not. And I feel like even if you comp like a book to a TV show, sometimes it's helpful. So like, what's the best way to do this? And I'm trying to figure it out. And this is me grappling with how can I be a helpful, effective book reviewer but also not taint or ruin anybody's experience reading a book. And I never want to assume, even with an old book that anybody's read it, I never want to assume, like I don't, I won't even talk about the thing in Gone Girl and what makes that book so great. I mean, so many things make that book so great, but I won't talk about, and then there were none. I won't talk about Murder on the Orient Express. Like these very epic, thrillers and mysteries, I still don't want to talk about it because I don't want to, I don't want to assume just because it's an old book, it means everybody knows what it is or that people have been spoiled for it. And I feel like Eight Perfect Murders, which I know I have somewhere. Peter? Swanson? It's, I don't know where he is. I'm like, Peter? Peter? But that book is like the perfect example of a book that people who read it didn't know other books were going to be spoiled for them. I haven't read it yet because there's a few mysteries in that. Murder of Roger Ackroyd, which has been slightly spoiled for me from a TV show. 
and what's the other one in there? I know I wrote them down, but I don't have it in front of me. I will pop it up on the screen. It's in my other, it's in my other writing notebook. Anyway, Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie is one of them, but I want to read the other mysteries that are spoiled in that before I read A Perfect Murder. So I've read some of them and some of them I don't care about, but, or I don't care if they get spoiled for me, but going into something and not knowing you're gonna be spoiled ugh, would also really aggravate me. So yeah, I would never, I would never take for granted or assume that everyone just knows the ending of something. And even with like movies and TV shows, like I feel like a lot of people, and you would like can definitely, like I hear people talk about Sixth Sense and people are like, that movie is so old. I don't feel bad ruining it for people, but I'm so, not obsessed is not the right word, but I'm so nervous about being the person who ruins somebody else's reading experience. Because to me, there's nothing worse than having your experience with your book tainted by somebody else. So again, I don't think anybody is doing any of it maliciously. Coming from me, I was never doing it maliciously. I a thousand percent know I've done it before and I don't wanna do it again because I can't get over it. I know I need to build a bridge and get over it. Ugh. So long story short, what is a bookstagram or booktuber to do? How do we review books and be helpful and not spoil things? What do you guys look for with book reviews? Like what is helpful to you? What can I provide in terms of context of what I'm talking about and context for the books? What do you guys wanna hear from me about the books that I've read? So like I said, part of this is me trying to get better and me trying to learn and trying to understand what's helpful for you as a viewer. I know what I'm looking for when I watch other people's content. I wanna be intrigued by a book. I wanna know enough to know if it's something in my wheelhouse or piques my curiosity. And I don't mind a comp title as long as it's not a giveaway comp and it doesn't spoil an ending kind of a comp or people don't say like the ending was just like the sixth sense or whatever it is where I'm like, well, I don't need to bother reading this because I know what the thing is. So I feel like there's ways of doing it and it just gets trickier and trickier with social media and how quickly things are out there. And I remember years ago, let me date myself, the finale of The Sopranos. Sopranos, why did I say it like that? The Sopranos, Sopranos, Sopranos. Anyway, I remember watching it and being one of those people that was like, hmm? like, <laughs> is my TV working? Like I was definitely one of those people. But being in the elevator at work the next day, and I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys remember what it was like being in an elevator at work. They would have those Captivate video screens in the elevator and it would always run some new stuff. And I remember being in the elevator with a bunch of people and it flashed on the screen what happened in the finale. And this guy in the elevator was like, I haven't watched it yet. Like he was so mad. He was like, this stupid Captivate screen in the elevator at work the next morning ruined the Sopranos for him. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, because you can't go anywhere. You can't, you can't go anywhere on the internet if there's like a huge spoiler or a twist. And I was listening to this Nancy Drew podcast, like Get a Clue Nancy Drew, which is a fun podcast for those Nancy Drew people out there. And it was last year, but one of the podcasters, she watches the show the next morning on the app. And she was saying how she went onto Facebook to like, do like a courtesy scroll or whatever. She wasn't looking for anything. She was like actively didn't want to be spoiled for something. And somebody posted something epic that happened in that episode. And then she was like the entire episode. I was just like waiting for the thing. So it's super difficult and I understand it happens. And like I said, it's not malicious intent with people, but it just makes me super gun shy about looking at some people's content now. And it's definitely changed some of the content I will watch or some of the people I will tune into because the trust is broken there. So it's just, it's tricky, it's tricky. So like I said, not a normal video for me, a little bit of a discussion, a little bit of me trying to just vent out a little bit of my angst <laughs> over my experience. So I will, to bring it all home, if you have not read Who is Maud Dixon by Alexandra Andrews, this is a debut novel. It's so well done. Don't read anything about it. Don't go on 
anybody's Instagram. If you see anybody posting about it, if you see anybody talking about it on BookTube, just pass it right by so nothing gets spoiled for you. And I feel like I'm building this book up so much, but it just, it was such a great book. It was such a great book. This tells you more than you need to know. And it just, ugh, if anybody's in a reading slump and needs to get out, I highly recommend this book being the one. So I loved it. I will get over it. I will separate what happened with my true feelings for the book and I will properly review it here and I will properly review it on Goodreads, but it's just hard. I think at the end of the day, the moral of this video is, it's hard being a book reviewer and a book reader. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Okay, so there you have it. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if books have been spoiled for you before and like how you deal with it and how you approach doing book reviews, whether it's on your Instagram or your Goodreads or your booktube channels and sort of what like metrics you put into place to make sure that you are not giving away too much and also not falling into a trap of being spoiled by reading or watching somebody else's stuff. So let me know whatever you want to let me know down below. And if you read Maud, let me know what you thought of it. It's so good. And I will see you guys soon in another video. So thanks so much, you guys. If you like videos like this, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below if you want to have more discussion videos. And if there's like a specific topic that you want me to discuss, I'm happy to do it. So just let me know. Trying something different. We'll see what happens. And that's really it for now. All right. Bye, guys.